So welcome back aliens, this is Navin Reddy from Talisco Learnings and in this video we'll talk about naming convention in Java. Now you know when you talk about uh, the good software or good programming, so let's say you're building a software and the people say you should follow some specific standards to make your code look good, to, to make your code more efficient and you should make your code more readable, right? So let's say you're making a software which is optimized. For that you have to do lots of stuff, right? To make your software readable or your, to, code your, to, to make your code readable, you just have to follow some simple rules. And one of the rules is naming convention. So whenever you write any code, make sure you use proper convention for the names. Example, you know, we have this habit of using variable name as X, Y, Z, then A, B, C, P, Q, R. We should not do that. Unfortunately, if you see my tutorials, I have used all those names, right? X, Y, but it should, it should not happen when you build a software. So while building a software, you should follow some naming convention, right? So what are these naming conventions? So whenever you take a variable name, it should look like you're using a variable name, right? Example, if you're storing a name of a student, so it should be S name, right? It should represent that you are using student's name, right? So let's say if you are storing a stock market price, so you should mention stock underscore or stock price, right? You have to mention the exact variable name, not X, Y. Let's say you are creating a class now. Your class name should look like a class name, right? It should be like, uh, uh, you, can, you, can, you can have a class name like string, you can have a class name like integer. So there are classes, right? Then you can have a class name like a student, you can have a class name like worker, maybe uh, engineer. So you can have all these class names. Make sure you ha you're using a perfect class name. Then we also have a concept of interfaces. So your interface should look like an interface. In fact, if you see my, in, in fact, in this further tutorials, we'll talk about different interfaces, right? Example, uh, this runnable interface, then serializable interface. So it should have a proper name. So how it should be? So when you, when you talk about any interfaces, your interfaces should be an adjective. Example, runnable, uh, serializable. So it should represent you are doing an adjective, right? So it should be able at the end. Not every interface will have able at the end. Example, remote interface. Now we don't have uh, able at the end, right? So there are certain interfaces which don't have able at the end, but there are lots of interfaces they have able at the end. So let's say if you're creating your own interfaces or own interface which provides the read access. So you can mention readable, right? So use a proper interface name. So as you can see, we have these examples here. Then we have a class name. So your class name should be noun, right? So let's say your class name can be student, it can be person, uh, it can be a, a computer. So you can have any class name, but it should follow the convention. Next, whenever you have a variable, or let's just talk about method first. So whenever you have a method, it should be a verb. Now when you say verb, it should provide some action. Example, action performed is a method name. Then we have run, uh, we have print, we have write. So it defines a verb, action, right? So that's methods. Now, if you talk about variables, it should look like a variable. Again, we have talked about uh, stock price and all those stuff, right? Bank details, all those stuff. And the last one, let's say if you talk about constant. So your constant should look like a constant. Example, pi. It's a constant, right? Then if you talk about the uh, density. So let's say if you are using, if you are creating an application where you want the density should be fixed, you can mention a constant there, right? Again, how to create constant in Java, that's a different topic. Right. So this is the examples of uh, interfaces now. So for interface, we can use capital letter. So again, we have to. So for interface class specifically, the first letter should be capital. Okay. Let me repeat. For class and interface, the first letter should be capital. For method, variable, package name, and so for this, we have to use uh, small characters for the first letter. So if you have a first letter, make it picture it is small. Example, if you talk about stock price, so S should be small, right? And for constant, we need to use everything capital. So let's say if you say uh, max, max price, so you can use all capitals, right? So that's the naming convention we have to use. Uh, but hold on, let's say we have this name, which is my first Java class. Now this is a class name, right? So in Java, whenever you define any name in which you have more than one word, so you can see we have my first Java class, it has four words. So whenever you combine these four words, if you have all of the same, uh, all, all small, you know, you cannot figure it out which word is changing. So it is not that readable. 
So that's why Java follows camel casing rule, which means whenever you combine two words, we need to have, so the second word first letter should be capital. So here, if you see the my first Java class, it is M is capital, first F is capital, J, J is capital and class is capital. Right. So that, that is how you have to use camel casing rule. So let's say if you're talking about the variable stock price. So S is small, but P is capital. Right. If you talk about methods, let's say action perform. So action A is small because it's a method, but P is capital because we are using camel casing rule. So it, it is applicable for everything except package and constant. So in packages, we use everything small, but in constant, we use everything capital. Right. So how do you differentiate between two words here? So let's say my my constant is max price. Now in this scenario, we need to use underscore in between. So max underscore price. Okay, now some people say it has, this is snake casing rule, but that's it, we have to use undersc underscore in between. Okay, so make sure you use proper naming convention. Now the advantages of this. So what is, what is the advantage? It will make your code more readable, right? So let me see, so, so let me see some uh, sample names here. So if I show you this, what is ABC, small ABC? Good. This is a variable, right? It, it can be a variable or it can be, yeah, it can be a variable, right? Variable can be of primitive or it can be a reference variable, right? Uh, what about this one? ABC all in capitals. Uh, good. That, that's constant, right? Whenever you have everything capital, that's constant. Good. Uh, now we have a method. Okay. So is it a method or a constructor? Now, since we have capital A, it's not a method, it's a construct, right? Because capital A means class. And when you have class in bracket, that's a construct, right? But if you have ABC, which is this, ABC small, and then we have a bracket, that's a method, right? Now, let me give one more. This is stretchable, right? So we have, uh, good, this is the interface, right? Because you're using a proper naming convention. So that's, that's the advantage of knowing all the naming convention. You should have, we should provide the proper names to your uh, literals. So yeah, that's it from this video. So that's about naming convention. Do watch subsequent tutorial to understand the basic concepts of Java. Thank you so much.